Hey, what's that? This is Unleash here today. And boy, we have something to talk about. Well, not even talk about, just to thank from Sega. Because, if you didn't already know, for some dumb, stupid, unknown reason, on Wednesday, it was the 30th anniversary of our blue lord and saviour, Sonic the Hedgehog. And on that day, in my opinion, was one of the greatest things that Sonic has ever produced. We got the Sonic Symphony, which contained a symphony, like you might have guessed, um, three songs from Tomoyo Otani and his band, and a couple of songs from Crush 40, not new ones by the way. And that was just amazing. I'm still in awe right now as we speak. Like, it's been like a whole 24 hours since I'm recording this. And oh my god, that's so good. I just can't thank Sega enough for how much the work they put into it. Especially Katie. She spent two years organizing and producing this entire symphony. Two years. Do you know how much effort and time and resources that must have taken? But do you know what even makes that even better? The fact that this whole symphony thing was free. No money. No effort from us needed to put in. Just, we just watch it when it's uploaded and... I have so much respect for Sega just because of that. Like, I know we always joke about how, well, sometimes we're not joking, but I know how we always say sometimes that Sega just doesn't care about Sonic fans, they just, they just don't care at all, but this is really just proved the opposite of that. Honestly, do you know how much time and effort two whole years of working on this thing must have gone? To all of us, it seemed like they were Sega were doing absolutely nothing this entire time, just sitting there, their feet up, Izuka is chilling, but no. They've been working on this entire symphony for two years. I just can't stress that enough. Two years! Get it infused into your brain. I don't care if games that take way longer than that. This is different to a game. This takes so much time, preparation, organization, just to get this whole symphony done. And it was well worth it. I know the adventure area did get done dirty by having only two songs done for the symphony, but I don't really don't care, honestly. The symphony, I feel like, is more the acknowledgement of the classic games and the dark era games. But then with Crush 40, they brought in all the um, adventure stuff with the Live and Learn, which, oh my god, sounds amazing with orchestra. When they remake Sonic Adventure 2, they need to have that version of the song in the final boss with the final hazard. Because that suits so well with the orchestra in the back. It's just so good. Oh my god. <sighs> I just don't even know what to say, man. I just love the choice of music they picked from it for the symphony. I'm so glad Sega actually acknowledged all their past. Okay, we could, they couldn't do all the past because, yeah, it's going to take a lot of work for that. But I feel like they went through every little detail in the series. Like, they didn't shy away from anything. Like, you wanted Shadow the Hedgehog? They got that in there. You wanted Sonic and the Black Knight? They've got that in there. You wanted the Werehog? You've got that in there. There's just so much love and passion put into this symphony, and I can feel it when I was listening to it. I was watching Premi stream, and... Yeah, um, no offense, Premi, but I feel like you're just... Underestimating how much work this took a bit. Just, just a tiny bit. I know Crush 40 is, was really good, but I feel like the symphony was better. That's just my opinion, though. Otani's band was the low point of it, in my opinion, because colors. But it, the remixes weren't terrible. Or they weren't terrible at all. They were amazing remixes, definitely by the, uh, both the originals. But I feel like they could have just left out Speak With Your Heart. And just slid in, maybe, I don't know, Fist Bump? Something like that. Something that's not Crush 40. Because I feel like that's what Otani's section was. The songs that weren't Crush 40 songs, so it would have had Reach for the Stars, Endless Possibilities, and then Shove in Fist Bump. That would have been awesome. But, oh well. But you know what, let's just talk about the Symphony real quick. But you know what, let's just talk about the Symphony real quick. That was the greatest thing I've ever actually seen. From Sonic 1, all the way to Sonic Forces. It was a joy to listen to, the different selection of tracks, the actual acknowledgement of the spin-off games from the 1990s, like Tales Adventure, Sonic Drift 2, uh, Sonic Chaos, I think, pretty sure that was Sonic Chaos, 
I mean, this is amazing, man. I'm so happy that they've actually just gone and pulled this off. Like, so good. Like, they even acknowledge forces and Lost World in a way I didn't even think they would do. Like, they acknowledge Infinite's theme. I'm so happy they acknowledge Infinite because that sounded so good. And then Lost World. I love, I love Lost World, honestly. And I'm so happy they got to do that for the symphony. I'm not even gonna lie, but I think C bottom seg Segway? Segu? I don't know. C bottom Segway is definitely one of the best songs in that entire symphony. It was so beautiful, man. And then Unleash got so much love in this. Like genuinely so much love. Like you got the symphony. There's so many songs in there you got. Okay, it's gonna be hard to try and remember this now. You had the main theme. Spagonia, Arid Sands Night, Shaman Night. So glad they put the night music in. So glad they did that. And then Chunan Day. And honestly, this is so much of for Unleashed in there. Because then you had a uh, Nate Wants to Battle. I actually really like his vocals. Had um, him on um, Otani's band redoing the un Endless Possibilities, which was really good. I really like the way that sound. I love the keyboard that they put in the interlude of that. And then the references that were inside the songs, like for example, they reference Sonic Runners in Reach for the Stars, Otani's remix of it, in the, into the interlude. Uh, you could hear the Runner soundtrack in the interlude there. I can't remember, I think it's Fly Away the song is. Pretty sure it's Fly Away. Yeah, they reference that in there, which, honestly, is so good. It's, I'm so glad they acknowledged Sonic Runners, like, thank god that has one of the best soundtracks in the series. Like, oh my god. So good, man. I just can't stress how good that was. But you know what? We also need to acknowledge something else. That's not, and that's not people who performed in it. That's people who edited this. Sam, you nailed this, man. MOME also nailed it. And I can't remember anybody else who did it, but everybody else, everybody who's on screen right now, the editors and gameplay providers of this symphony, thank you. They did an amazing job. It was honestly just so funny just rewatching Sam's stream of the symphony with context, like knowing that he actually edited it and that's why he was like, predicting everything. Because it was so weird, just. Oh my god. Sam, I love you, man. Ugh, god, I don't even know what to say anymore, man. This is too good, that symphony. This is definitely, well, the 30th anniversary is, in my opinion, the best anniversary to go down in history. Of Sonic, like I don't care if we're getting Colors Ultimate this year. I honestly don't care. Colors Ultimate is looking pretty good, and we've got new footage of that in the Sonic Symphony. And okay, yeah, Tropical Resort looks better, I must say. But oh my God, that Symphony just carried the entire anniversary. That was so good. That was so good. I need to infuse that into everybody else's brain with that. Remember, two years. Oh my God, Sega. Thank you. Could we all just have a go at Sega on Twitter, at KT, especially KT. God damn. That was so good. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, especially that last one. And I hope to see you next time. Peace. Thank you, Sega. Thank you.